232 Press Conference in New York, New York. UFC 232 goes down December 29th from the T-Mobile Arena, only on Paper View. In the main event, it's the rematch of one of the greatest fights in UFC history. First to the stage, the Mauler, Swedish superstar, Alexander Gustafsson. Challenging him for the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship, one of the greatest fighters in MMA history. The former 205-pound title holder, he's back, John Bones Jones. In the co-headliner of this massive pay-per-view event, a super fight between two of the best female fighters in the world. Introducing first, the UFC bantamweight champion, Amanda Lioness Nunes. moves up to featherweight to face the reigning, defending, women's 145-pound champion of the world, Chris Cyborg. We appreciate it. Who has the first question? Go ahead, buddy. First question here for John. Uh, in these next eight weeks, as the fight builds up and the hype builds up, there'll be plenty of discussion and commentary about you and your history. I'm wondering, is that something you try to block out or something that you focus on as a source of motivation? I just, I just try to block it out. First of all, New York, what's up, guys? It's good to be home. Sorry that I'm not fighting at this event, but I promise you guys I will fight at the Garden soon. That's a promise. Even though I'll have to pay 9% to the government, I'll do it. <laughs> um, as far as uh, all the controversy and all the shit that I've just got out of, um, I just try to block it out. I just try to block it out. At the end of the day, um, I'm here, I'm in the present. And I'm back on the on the mission that I've always been on. That's to solidify my spot as one of the greatest fighters ever. Go ahead, John. Welcome back. Was there ever a chance that you could have headlined this event this weekend at MSG? What was the process there? Yeah, we talked about fighting uh, this weekend at MSG, uh, but I wasn't I wasn't ready to go. I wasn't in the shape I wanted to be in, and so we just waited a few more months. Dave Cormier, of course, fighting for the heavyweight title, is defending his belt. He said that if he loses the heavyweight title, he can still go back down and defend the 205-pound title. And I wanted to get your reaction to, to that. Cormier said if he loses if he the, heavyweight, the heavyweight belt, he can, he can go back down to the heavyweight, keep that belt, and defend it next. How, how do you feel about that? Cormier said that he can go back down to light heavyweight at any point. And, and defend that belt. Defend the belt. The title this weekend. Defend the belt that was never his. If Daniel Cormier wants to come back down a light heavyweight, he'll he'll challenge one of the contenders, you know, for my bill. So you, you would not grant him a, a, a shot. Say it again? You would not grant him a fight in that in that case. There's no reason to grant him a fight. He got knocked out the last time we fought. Thing, John, I know that you and your team weren't happy with some of the reports that came out about the USADA news and how it was depicted. Do you want to clarify anything about what that report said and what your perspective was? No, no, I don't want to clarify anything. I felt like I said what I had to say about the situation. It was a nightmare to go through. So glad that it's over. And uh, I'm just focusing on the positive things in life, like having my job back and uh, being able to get back on that mission that I was on when I first joined the UFC, which is being the greatest fighter ever. 
just, just for Chris, real quick. Uh, you and Amanda have kind of gone back and forth on social media a little bit. Where did this bad blood stem from? Have you guys always disliked each other? Where, where did that come from? You know, I don't have any problem. I just accept to fight her when I fight her home. And she asked for nine months for training for this fight. And they think when you call somebody out, they have to be ready. They don't have to meet you with nine months for the ready. Uh, I, give, I give my time to the UFC. I give my time, you know, I have to be ready for her. She's, she's strong, she's powerful. I have to be ready, you know. And I give my time, my day, and they accept. Now we are, we are here, ready to go. After John. Uh, John, the last time you fought Alex, you spoke a lot about how you maybe didn't take the fight the most seriously. Um, can you just elaborate a little bit more on that, and how are things different in your preparation to fight him this time around? Yeah, the, the last time I fought Alexander Gustafsson, you know, a lot of people, you know, I remember the media was saying, yo, this guy's like, he's a lot like John Jones, you know, he's tall, he's lanky, you know, he can move and everything like that. And in my head, I just kind of, you know, I was, I was hot, I was on a roll, and I just figured, you know, maybe he fights a lot like me, but he's not me, you know, and so, um, I didn't train. I didn't train as hard as I should have. And I just, like I said, I was winning so many fights. I was being a wild dude, and uh, and I was still winning. And and it caught up to me. It definitely caught excuses. Up to me. Excuses. That's all I hear. That's all I hear. That's all I hear. I beat you once. I can beat you again. I guess this could be for both John and Alex. Uh, John, this is probably being your most competitive fight you've had, the first one. So how do you see it going down? Are you aiming for a more thorough, dominant performance this time? Say it again. John, it's, it's, it's hard to hear up here for okay. us. The first fight was probably one of your closest ever. Is the goal this time around to make it much more clear-cut and dominant? Yeah, the, the goal is to finish this fight, and, and that's what I will do. I will finish this fight. Yeah. And for Alex, uh, just your, your take on this. Uh, this is your third chance at a UFC title. The first two didn't go your way. Why is this time going to be different? Well, I'm very fortunate to have a third time to fight for the belt again. And uh, again. I'm fighting John. It's like, it's, it's, the, it's the biggest fight of my life. And uh, I was expecting him too much the first fight before. This fight, I'm going to give him the respect I gave him the first time. I'll push him. I'll push him. I'll show the world. You can, you can beat the man that's never been beaten before. And one for Dana. Uh, Dana, in your opinion up there, is this the greatest male? I, I got a question for you, Alex. Okay. So, if, if my excuse was that I didn't train hard enough, what's your excuse for losing? That's where you're wrong. I didn't lose, John. I don't know that. I didn't lose. For you, Dana, is in your opinion, is this the greatest male and female fighter in the world sitting up there, up to your right? I mean, listen, if you look at what John Jones has accomplished at the time, all the things that John Jones was doing when he accomplished these things, it's, it's pretty amazing. But we talked about this yesterday on, on ESPN, it's true, there's a lot of things to go down as the greatest ever. John now has the opportunity to come back. And, and erase all the mistakes that he's made in, in, in his younger career. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what happens. Alexander Gustafsson, when, when we made this fight, this fight was in Canada. When we made this fight, everybody was bitching about this fight. This fight was terrible, everything else. It ended up being one of the greatest, if not the greatest light heavyweight championship ever. Um, and uh, I'm excited that we can make this fight again. And props to both guys for taking it. John coming off a huge layoff and all the problems that he's had to come back and fight Alexander Gustafsson. It's awesome. I'm excited. And just one more for you, Dana, uh, off topic a little bit. We have this Ben Askren for Demetrius Johnson trade that happened. Can you just elaborate on what happened there? How it went down and when Ben Askren could potentially make his UFC debut. I don't really want to get into all that right now. We, you know, we're talking about these fights, but oh, relax, relax, New York. So the uh, Demetrius Johnson, I said the other day, I felt like you know the guy never got the respect he deserved here. All the things that he's accomplished, he was never truly happy and. Where he's going now, his longtime trainer and friend Matt Hume is one of the executives in this company and you know, hopefully he'll be a lot happier there th th than he was here. Um, you know, he broke world records, he accomplished a lot in, in this company and, um, and then Ben Askren and I have had a 
very interesting cast, and uh, he hit me up about maybe three or four months ago, six months ago, and, and said, am I ever going to be able to fight in the UFC? And I said, I, I don't know, that, that's, that's not up to me. He, he was still under contract, he retired, and he was still under contract, so this is just one of those things that organically came together, and we made it work for everybody, and here we go. Alex, when I've spoken to you in the past, you've told me that fighting John and beating John was more important to you than winning the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship. You get the chance to do both at this fight, but why was that your mindset? Well, I get the same mindset right now. It's, uh, I'm fighting for the belt, and that's huge. That's massive. You know, I'm, I'm, it's the biggest fight of my life. And I'm fighting John, it's even bigger. You know, because I got an opportunity to fight him again, I got an opportunity to beat him, and I can show the world he's beatable. He bleeds like everyone else. And I'm gonna show the three men. I promise you. And, and like Mike said, this is your third title shot. Are you viewing this as your last chance at the UFC Light Heavyweight Championship? No, I'm just getting started. <laughs> and for John, um, can I just start by asking what you've learned most about yourself during this recent absence? Nothing. <laughs> That was good. No, I don't. I try not to make any fight the biggest fight of my career. My, my fight is uh, the fight to be the best ever. And, and that doesn't, that comes with every fight, you know. Just, just the last time I was up here was against Daniel Cormier. He had so much to prove and all this shit. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I don't worry about individual athletes. Uh, I worry about the journey, not, not the individual battles. So I'm, I'm already way ahead of, 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 of this fight here. You know, Dustin doesn't define me. I have, I have a lot of fighting to do, so um, that's where my head's at. Just becoming the best. Amanda. Amanda, if you beat Chris, what is the future going to look like for you? Will you stay at featherweight? Will you stay at bantamweight? Will you be moving up and down the division? What's the plan? You know, my energy is focused for this fight first, and then after that we can talk about. But uh, definitely, I will. I will get it back home with me. I'm here for that. Then why to give me this opportunity? And he know I'd be able to do this. And I will prove it. Let's see that. Let's see that. I will. Let's see it. 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 Let's see it.
And I wonder my name is the Hall of Fame in the Performance Institute. I wonder my name is there. Register it for everybody reminding me. Thank you for that, John. Before uh, UFC 214, I asked you about fighting Brock Lesnar, and you said, first, I'm going to deal with DC, and then I'm going to deal with Brock Lesnar. You didn't get that opportunity. Is that a fight you still want? Yeah, I would like to fight Brock Lesnar still. Um, absolutely. I think Brock Lesnar is one of the most entertaining guys, you know. People want to see him in the UFC against entertaining guys. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward for the, to the opportunity to still compete against Brock Lesnar. Dana, just to follow up on that, uh, we've seen that Brock Lesnar was performing uh, this evening in Saudi Arabia. Is he welcome tomorrow at UFC 230? Yeah, people keep asking me that, but uh, he's, no, he's not coming here. Why? Uh, just back to John as well. DC's been talking this week about potentially wanting a third fight with you, maybe at heavyweight. Is that of interest? Would you, would you like that fight? Um, I, I would fight DC at heavyweight, but I feel like I have nothing to prove. I've beaten him twice, and uh, I feel like fighting him at heavyweight is, 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 is putting all the cards in his favor. Um, I, yeah, I have nothing to prove against Daniel Cormier. I always, I always say that a lot of this fighting is not personal to me. You know, my, like, my goals are just to be great. It's not about these individual rivals. So me challenging Daniel Cormier would be making it a personal thing. If he had beat me, then I could see me challenging him. But um, it's like I've, I've done enough to that guy. I'm going to let him breathe easy and enjoy some of this stuff. Just one last one for Alex. Um, Alex, you're fighting Alexander Volkov before. You fought Daniel Cormier before. Who's the tougher fight? He's a loser! He beat DC! No, the guy no, he didn't. lied to me. He's, 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 the, he's the tough opponent, but uh, that makes the whole thing much much more funny for me. Did, did you beat DC as well? No! Okay. I will beat you. I will beat you. No, I mean, we had a close fight. Do you consider that you did get ripped off in a DC fight as well? It was a split decision. I lost. But I will beat you. Too. But you did beat me, but you lost to DC. Whatever it is, yeah, I did, but I beat you. What about Anthony Johnson? Did you beat him? No, but I still beat you. What about, it's all about our fight. What about Phil Davis? Did you beat him too? No. I beat you. I'm just trying to give you a psycho psychological value. That, that, that's the only thing that counts. Nothing else, dude. I'm pretty sure. It's just the past. Yeah. Thank you, John. Coming back after this long layoff, I mean, time and time off can really damage a fighter. How do you know that it's not going to affect you for this one? Um, because I've been training my butt off this whole time. I've been boxing non-stop and I feel, I feel like that's been one of the biggest holes in my game is my hands and uh, I feel like I've closed that hole up a lot. I'm still not you know, a world-class boxer, uh, but it's a lot better than it used to be. Uh, so I've been boxing all summer and I can feel it in my sparring already that my hands have completely changed my defensively and offensively. Are you sure? No, I think so. Are you sure? I think so. I'm looking forward to it. Right. There you go, a little personality. Keep going. Um, um, and then, you know, I took off a, a year before knocking out Darren Cormier, so I feel confident in myself uh, before, you know, and then the other time when I was out of the year, I, I won by unanimous decision against uh, Open St. Peru, so every time I've been out for a long time, I've always come back and showed up. I feel like fighting's in my spirit, it's in my heart, it's something that God blessed me with, so it's not going anywhere. Dana said something interesting about, you know, winning allows you to somewhat erase the mistakes of your youth. Do you, do you feel like those can be erased or do you just want to embrace that they happen and move on? Move on? Um, I, don't, I don't feel like they can be erased, no, but I do feel like, um, I feel like society that we live in, people are, are able to forgive and forget um, as long as you show signs of trying to do better and trying to move forward. At the end of the day, we all have done things that, we've, that we're not proud of and that we've all made mistakes. You know, the difference with being who I am is that, you know, you can Google me and, and figure out what's going on in my life. So, um, I don't beat myself up over anything that's happened throughout my life. I forgive myself. I think that's very important to be able to do. And um, so we all make mistakes. It's, it's about what we do moving forward. I have, I have a lot more chapters left in my book to write. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. Chris, for you, I know when we talked after the, I think you tried to make this right or they announced it in December around September, and you were pretty upset. What happened to sort of calm you down and say, I'm okay and wait until December for this fight to take place? Uh, the first thing is I see calling me, my manager for a fight I'm on the September 8th. And the other thing, I agree fight in Yanukonaska in three weeks notice for a fight I'm on the July. 
and this is nothing happened. And they accepted to fight her in September 8th. After she's calling me out six months before. And she said, no, I just, and she signed the deal for five December. And you know, you know, fires, you don't have an option. You have to wait, to keep training and wait. But she's gonna pay in December. How do you win the fight? You know, I train for everything. I have five rounds. And I watch cup fights, the Amanda, and I know she's, she likes to do the pressure, but she's, she don't like them put, her fighters put pressure on her. And I'm the pressure. When she did the best punch on me, I'm gonna be the pressure. She's gonna feel that. Thank you so much. Uh, over here, John. Just Thank want to get your thoughts on the main event this weekend between Derek Brunson, and, I mean Derek Lewis and Daniel Cormier. How do you think it's gonna play out and what's your prediction? I'm a big fan of Derek Lewis. I gotta say that. Man. He's hilarious. My balls were hot. That's great. That's classic. I think, I think, like, I'm a PR nightmare, right? If I were to say my balls were hot, it just wouldn't have gone over the same way. It's like, fuck that guy. But he pulled it off and it's become a sensation. I, I love it. I'm so confused with, with PR and all this shit. It's just not my thing. Um, I, I would prefer my balls are hot over some of your PR yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, I, I do have DC winning the fight. DC is very fast. Uh, for you know his frame, you wouldn't assume that he's fast, but he's he's quick um, and and very well rounded. And that's the key to being on top at this game. You got to be able to do uh, everything, and that's what DC has has done very well. So DC is going to win more than likely. Just a follow-up question. While you've been away, have you been watching the light heavyweight division? What do you make of guys like Anthony Smith, guys like Luke Rockhold possibly moving up into the division? Nice, nice. Yeah, Luke would be a great addition. He's, he's a very talented dude. Anthony Smith, I saw his last fight. Um, I've been reading some of the comments he's been saying about me publicly. Or Easy and, yeah, I don't, I don't think he's, he's at the point where he needs to be yet. Um, Volkan's not known to be a ground specialist, and, and he was handling Anthony on the ground for a long time. So that things like that shows me that Anthony is not ready to fight against me. Um, but I'm I'm more than um, willing to make him my first title defense after I beat Alexander. Dana, just a question for you: If Derek Lewis wins this weekend, would he then fight Brock Lesnar, or would Brock Lesnar still have his fight with DC? I don't know. We'd have to see how that whole thing plays out. Um, you know, again, when I was on ESPN yesterday. They thought it was absolutely impossible that Derek Lewis wins this fight, which is crazy to say in this sport. Derek Lewis is one punch away from winning any fight. So uh, it could absolutely happen, and we'll see what happens if it does. Will you be watching Curtis Blade's performance in China and sort of factoring in as well what happens next? Of course, of course. Uh, just a question for Chris. Chris, over here. We know there's been rumors for a while that you're looking at uh, possibly retiring eventually after a few more fights. How many more fights do you think you'll stick around for if you do beat Amanda and sort of uh, conquer that aspect of the fight game? You know, I, I don't have bad injuries. I don't have any injuries. I think I can fight more five years. You know, I keep going. The one, for my fans, I love my job. Uh, and the people think when I say I would like to fight one boxing fight, people think I want to retire. No, I don't retire. I want to keep fighting in If it, I, It's like a dream, make one boxing fight. And because I, I, I love boxing. I train every day and I would like to have this opportunity. But this is no means I want to retire in You know, I have a long career and I continue fighting. I'm happy. I love my job. One more. Go ahead, buddy. Right. Alex. Alex. Since your first fight with John, twice he's been suspended for performance enhancing drugs. Although critics are split on whether they believe his reasonings or believe it affected his legacy, what's your personal opinion of those two suspensions and whether John was a clean fighter when you fought him? I don't care about that. It's in the past. I don't care about that at all. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to face John. And, and uh, we're going to have a greater fight than the first one. I can promise you that. Thank you. Thank you. One more. Yeah. Uh, I know you may not care about this, but Brock Lesnar recaptured one of the WWE championships this morning in Saudi Arabia. Oh, he be allowed to win it. I did not know that. Thank you. Uh, I don't think Vince would let him wear that in the octagon, to be honest with you. He could bring whatever belt he wants to bring. I, I could care less.
Hey, we're gonna square these guys off and then we'll get the weigh-ins going. Thank you, New York. You're always awesome. We appreciate it. Johnny! 